Okay, so this is video number two of this crash engine. Um, I just finished brushing it off. I took it outside and I sprayed it down real well with alcohol, blew it with my air compressor, and I pulled all my plugs out and off camera I went ahead and I took the two rear cover screws out and I straightened this bracket. I haven't done anything else to this. Um, <clears throat> I want to call your attention to something though in the first video if you want to check out these frames. When I got this engine it was in this state and if you see the throttle control arm uh, the position of the throttle control arm it would appear that that is closed and then that's also backed up by the next picture where I pull the car or I pull the uh, that dirt plug out of there and you can see how the car barrel is closed and that dirt clod was flat on the bottom so then after I removed the carb, it also turned out that it looks like the uh, crankshaft just happened to be in a position that it wasn't going to allow dirt in there anyway also. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how this came to me. So all of those things in mind, the, the, in, the exhaust was intact, it wasn't bent, distorted, or anything like that. All of those things combined together are telling me that this thing should be in pretty damn good condition internally and I'm not entirely convinced that I need to do a complete disassembly of it. Uh, now when I pulled this out I was spraying in there and I blew all that little bit of particulate matter out of there and of course when the engine arrived to me didn't have a plug in it but it hadn't been in the crash without a plug so I'm not really too concerned about that. So let's uh Go ahead and pull this rear cover and see what the inside of this engine looks like, and at least in the rear cover anyway, and then we'll kind of take it from there as to the next steps. Now, you saw how clean and nice this bearing looks. This front bearing looks really good. And now that I've got this plug out, let's just huh, look at that. Enough suction there or enough compression there to pull push that out. So here's the inside of this engine. Wow. Looks really, really nice. Feels nice. I mean, that thing is smooth as silk. Yeah, it's, it smells like fuel residue, obviously, because it's been run. Now, this rear bearing looks a little dark, but it feels great. Let's, uh,. Pull the head here real quick. Wow, that's really strange. Pull the head here and see what the top of the piston looks like and we'll take it from there. It looks like sealant material. Inside of that top of that head doesn't give me a whole lot of encouragement. Make a clean paper towel here. Gently go in and pull out. I wonder how easy this sleeve will come up. Try put my plastic piece in here and see if I can get that sleeve to want to come up. I mean, I don't know how. I think um, Randy said he'd done like I don't know how many flights now. Now I'm not sure how many flights you said you had on this engine, but damn, look at the top of that piston. Two stroke engines will accumulate considerably more carbon on the top of the piston in a shorter time frame. This thing looks perfect. I mean it looks like a brand new engine. Although that connecting rod is kind of giving me some trouble here. There we go. Look at that. This thing looks perfect. Let's see. Hmm. Look at the 
I mean, you can see the swirl marks on that connecting rod and how shiny. I mean, this engine looks damn near brand new. Let's go and uh, see if I can get this crankshaft out real quick. And I mean, look at this. This just feels, I mean, I know you can't feel it, but it feels terrific. These bearings are fine, in my opinion. So if nothing else, all I'm going to go do is maybe just get this crankshaft out, flush the inside of this engine with kerosene. Well, not kerosene. I've got some really old model fuel. I'll just flush the inside out with model fuel and put this thing back together and run it. So let me go see if I can get this crankshaft out. Okay, that didn't take but a couple little taps to get the crankshaft out. I mean, this engine's in fantastic shape. I think the only thing I'm going to do here is obviously it doesn't need bearings replaced. Uh, and that bearing may have a little bit of discoloration on it, but if you could feel it, you could feel how smooth and silky it is. Both of them are. They feel brand new. So I think the only thing I'm going to do here is uh, go find that old jug of fuel I've got and just pour fuel in this engine real quick and then maybe blow it out with my air compressor. Uh, wipe these other parts down, lube them up, put them back together and we'll get this engine ready for a run. Okay, so all these parts have been washed out, washed down with really old jug of some old FAI fuel I had and I've wiped them down. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use some 3 in 1 oil to squirt very liberally in here. Kind of lube these internals up again before reassembly. Get this bearing coated really good. Crankshaft, everything. Just kind of wipe everything down with, or coat everything with a nice coat of oil. For assembly, for reassembly, and then we'll uh, put this thing back together, and she'll be ready to rock and roll here. Okay, so there you have it. This engine is reassembled, and I don't even have a glow plug in there. And listen. It already kind of has compression uh, without the plug. Now, um, Randy had sent this with this Bisson exhaust, and obviously, you know, those of you that have watched my channel know that I can't mount this to my stand like this because it's totally in the way. And mounting it like this, I've done on other engines before, but it really brings those tubes dangerously close to the prop. Fortunately for me, I have an OSBGX engine, which just so happens to have the exhaust, the full exhaust and the adapter, and that's the same exhaust that goes comes stock on the FX engine, so that's what I'll be stock, uh, putting on here for the run here coming up. Now the other thing was, the manual for this engine, as do most OS manual, for two-stroke engines calls for either an A3, A5, or a number 8 plug. That's what I was going to use, but Randy was telling me that he really had the best success using an OSF plug. So, just to try to keep things the same as they were, I'll put an OSF plug in here for the run, and uh, probably use some 10% fuel and the same size prop, and we'll get this thing going and we'll see how how she runs and tunes in the next video.